Good morning, this is Lila Jaber. Thank you for joining us again for the next interview series. In Florida, I think we're blessed with tremendous energy companies that are significant economic developers in our state. Florida has a very diverse portfolio of energy and a diverse set of companies that provide that energy. Florida is also the home to some of the strongest and best municipal electric and gas companies. Today, I'm joined by Amy Zubeli, the president of the Florida Municipal Electric Association. Welcome, Amy. Thank you for being here. So obviously, I'm familiar with FMEA, but to our viewers who might not know what your organization does, what is the Florida Municipal Electric Association? Thanks, Lila, and thanks for having me here. First, FMEA is the Florida Municipal Electric Association. We are the statewide trade association that represents Florida's 33 public power utilities. Uh, we have large utilities like JEA and Jacksonville and Orlando and Tallahassee and Lakeland and Gainesville and we represent very small utilities like Moorhaven and Chattahoochee and Williston. Um, we're geographically dispersed from the Panhandle all the way down to Key West, at the tip of the state. Um, and FMEA provides uh, legislative advocacy both at the state level and in, at the federal level in Congress. We also serve as that mutual aid coordinator during hurricanes so we arrange all of the mutual aid crews that come in to assist our members um, and we serve is that liaison to our members during a hurricane situation with our state and local government um, and industry partners as well. And we provide training and networking opportunities and information sharing as a means for our members to collectively get together and network with each other and share information with each other. You know, um, something you said reminded me, one of the initiatives that um, <clears throat> has been a leadership opportunity for FMEA is the Thank a Line Worker campaign and uh, I commend you for what you've done to lead that effort and, and really bring attention to the hard work of line men and women. Do you want to elaborate on how that started and, and what you're seeing as a result? I took over my current role um, in January of 2017 as executive director. My background prior to that um, was, was government relations and communications. And as part of my role as executive director and running the association, is um, I'm now in charge of mutual aid. And if you remember 2017, what happened was yes. Hurricane Irma, which turned out to be our largest, and, and a statewide, our largest mutual aid event across the board that we had ever had. Mm -hmm. um, every one of my members were impacted from that hurricane, and, mm -hmm. and 23 of them used mutual aid assistance. And so it was uh, my inaugural hurricane in the mutual aid world, you know, working with my mutual aid partners around the country and seeing all of these line workers just respond head over heels to come to our request for help was so heartwarming and I you know was forever grateful for them and so it just started a lot of you know promotions on them and, and thanking them for everything they do you know they put themselves they leave their homes they leave their families they put themselves at risk and they you know come to Florida and in, in our hot weather and deal with our traffic and, and and all of those types of situations so we've been really pleased to be able to promote them over the years we host our line workers rodeo every year uh, where the guys can come together to showcase their skills and we've been really trying Trying to push over the past few years a thinking line worker license plate in the state of Florida and we were really excited this year when um, the Florida legislature did finally pass a bill that creates several several license plates, but the Thank a Line Worker license plate is one of those. Um, waiting for the governor to sign the bill as well, but it will establish a scholarship fund oh, wonderful. Uh, to enable new line workers to come in to learn the trade. Um, but we're excited about it. We're excited that we can drive around the town and the state and see a Thank a Line Worker to remind us of all the great work that they do. You mentioned uh, the mutual aid coordination and obviously the great work you all do to coordinate amongst each other, but also mm -hmm. with the private companies. COVID has given us a new disaster, yeah. if, if you will. And so um, thinking about the size of your municipal electric and gas members, um, how have they been consistent in addressing the COVID issue? Um, well, first, we only are, are electric, even though a lot of my members have electric and gas, mm -hmm. I technically really only represent the electric mm -hmm. side. But, you know, that, that ties in well, like you mentioned, we're, we're in a pandemic, we're also in hurricane season. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd like to kind of break that apart a couple ways. One, you know, as electric utilities, we've adapted for our customers' sake. 
And then two, we've also had to adapt for our employees' sake. And then we've had to adapt in preparing for a hurricane mm -hmm. as well. And so on the customer side, you know, most of our uh, municipal electric utilities, they either suspended disconnects for non-payment and late fees. Uh, many of them also put new policies or programs and procedures into place to help lower customer bills. Um, they're all encouraging their customers if they're struggling or have financial impacts as a result of COVID. To, to call them to work out payment plans and arrangements. And so they're all working within their local communities and establishing programs and procedures as they relate to their local communities and respond to what works best in their community. In terms of their, um, you know, from their employees and on the utility side, they had to quickly adapt and change to whether it was allowing employees who were able to work from home, the ability to work from home, changing customer service processes and procedures to take those calls from home and to take virtual payments if they weren't able to already. Um, you know, we're electric utilities. We provide essential services. We need to keep the hospitals open and running. We need to keep our grocery stores open and running and not just the lights on and the beer cold, but we also need to keep the lights on and the beer cold and we need to keep our Wi-Fi, you know, routers running so that we can keep connected and do our distance learning. And so we adapted very quickly to the changing environment and, and put new technological programs and procedures into place. And for those that were not able to work from home, our operational people, our control center operators, our power plant operators, and of course our field personnel and line workers, you know, we implemented processes and procedures to have them uh, social distance with each other, to report to different stations, to rotate crews, new sanitizing procedures, both for the operations buildings, but as well as for all of the, the trucks and the equipments. Safety number is our number one priority across the board. And so we wanted to make sure that um, obviously all of our customers and employees um, stay safe and you know our mission has always been to provide very highly reliable electricity at a cost that's affordable and that will continue to be our mission uh, whether it's a pandemic or a hurricane you know as I mentioned we're also not only are we in a pandemic but we are in hurricane season mm -hmm. and as you approach a hurricane in a pandemic situation there's all these new challenges that are put into place if we find ourselves in a mutual aid event how are we going to address concerns relating to housing and mm -hmm and feeding crews and social distancing crews for work assignments. And so FMEA has worked very closely with our members um, immediately to develop what we're calling a statement of principles that outlines expectations and responsibilities of both aiding and receiving utilities in a mutual aid event if we find that would occur um, during hurricane season while we're in the pandemic. And so um, in addition to our normal hurricane plans this year, we've added this whole new layer of planning and preparations as it relates to COVID. So, but is that only within your membership or, or do you need to reach across and encourage the private companies to have similar I standard can, operating You procedures. know, we have all across the board, industry-wide, and really across the country, been working um, collaboratively through the Electric Subsector Coordinating Council, the ESCC. Um, I've served on one of their, they've had several working groups through the ESCC, and the ESCC represents the IOUs mm -hmm. and public power and the co-ops, and they created several working groups to establish a resource guide on how electric utilities would approach um, situations in a, in a pandemic situation as it relates to COVID. And so all of the electric utilities have had a part in preparing and addressing those types of concerns. They're all working and implementing them into their plans. Now everybody may address them a little bit differently. And so that's just how we have addressed them within our members right. is through that statement of principles. And we've shared that across, um, across the industry as well for our APPA partners. As it relates to your customers, is there a greater sense of community from employees and, and municipal energy providers? You know, as public power utilities, we do feel that we are our communities. We live in the communities that we serve. Our families are in the communities that we serve. Our kids grow up there. They go to school in our communities that we serve. You know, as, as municipally owned electric utilities, we're governed by 
either city commissioners and mayors that are directly elected by our customers in the community or by governing board members that were appointed by our local elected officials. So we are a direct representation of our communities. Amy, FMEA has uh, been, uh, well actually you were an inaugural uh, supporter and sponsor of the Florida's Women in Energy Leadership Forum. Thank you for that, but most importantly, thank you for your leadership and the whole dialogue. Why is it important to you? Well, first, Lila, congratulations to you um, on the Florida Women in Energy Leadership Forum. What a what a great forum. I have, have been an inaugural member of it and, and have enjoyed every one of them. Um, you've done a fabulous job of bringing together a really diverse group of, of people, not just women, um, in the energy, uh, cross sectors, electric utilities and, and gas. And I look forward to the event every year. So thank you for everything that you Very do welcome. to make that happen. Um, I think it's really important to be able to highlight the achievements of women in the industry and to encourage um, the ability, or to have a forum for the ability to network with each other mm -hmm. and to learn from each other and to be able to branch outside of your little sector of that industry. So it's a great forum and it's a great ability uh, that you have put together for us to be able to do that. Thank you. And you know, at the end of every forum, I ask each of you to go back and think about what you've learned and what you're willing to do in your own organizations to carry the conversation mm -hmm. forward. So I understand you've got some breaking news you want to share. We do, us. we do. We are really excited to announce um, the creation of what we're calling Women in Florida Public Power. Um, so within our FMEA membership, uh, we want to create a, we're, we're in the very, very early stages of this, but we're creating what we're going to call a new interest group uh, within our membership of both women within our industry, as well as men who want to support and encourage women in the industry. And so we're gathering together our interest group group now and um, it'll be a forum for us to be able to share information um, to all of the women within our organization and we want to be able to expand it while we're in the pandemic with some webinars um, and hopefully eventually some in-person meetings and right. tied to some of our normal events and maybe even eventually its own standalone event and so um, I hope it's also a means for us to encourage people to to attend um, the Florida Women and Energy Leadership Forum as well. Thank you. Well, you know the one of the main purposes, of course, is to inspire uh, organizations to take this and run with mm -hmm. it. And so uh, I applaud you and uh, see that as a great vehicle for professional development, leadership opportunities and, and education. And I'm thrilled you're thinking that the membership would be men and women. Yeah. Because, of course, we don't move the dial without that diversity. Well, well, that's right. We're we're really excited about it. We want this to be a, a group that kind of directs the progress of this on their own. Um, that it's a forum for them to tell us how they want us to establish this and what it want, uh, how they want it to look. Um, so how do people get involved? Um, they can email anybody at FMEA. They can go to publicpower.com and contact us and, and send us a note. Um, any of our FMEA members we're creating a list for, but as well as any of our associate members, we're going to hope to find ways that we can interact both uh, with our associate members as well, our vendor companies and other businesses that like to do businesses uh, business with our members. Great. So you mentioned the forum. Mm -hmm. The next forum is November 11th through the 13th in Orlando. Mm -hmm. and. Thanks to you, one of our keynote speakers is Joy Ditto, the new uh, president of the American Public Power Association. Mm -hmm. What do you hope she says? Joy's great. Yeah. Um, I've known Joy for a really long time. Joy, and I, and I won't take her thunder away or steal from the forum, um, but Joy used to work for APPA years ago as a government relations representative. And so I knew her from, from from back then, and then she left to go run a um, another utility national trade association, and now now she's coming back as APPA CEO, and really excited to have her back. Um, I'm I'm looking forward to, and I hope that she addresses how she sees the industry's changed from just within APPA as as being a staff member years ago to now running it and seeing how it's changed um, just within that organization from before and all that. So I'm excited to have her now. We're looking we forward to too. it. We are too. So in that regard, change. So if you had a magic crystal ball that showed you what the ten, next 10 years look mm. like, 
What do you see on the horizon in terms of energy development and innovation? Things are changing rapidly. Um, we all have those cell phones and the smartphones and they do everything we want them to. And electric utilities are, are keep trying to keep up with that. You know, we're rapidly changing um, and adapting to these technological changes. And I think we're, you know, a really unique fit to make all that happen. We're seeing, uh, we're responding to customers' desires and wishes for more renewable energy. We're building some large-scale utility solar farms, um, including the Florida Municipal Solar Project, which will provide power to uh, 16 of our members. Um, so we're doing some really innovative things on renewable energy. We have a group that's been working together with the National Labs um, and New Energy as part of a Department of Energy grant to study solar and storage and how working together um, the impacts on our grid. And so we're looking at projects like that and looking forward to bringing them online in the future. Um, several of our communities have also implemented their own renewable energy goals mm -hmm. and, are, and are finding their own unique and innovative ways to uh, supply not just their own administrative buildings, but their communities with renewable power as well. Mm -hmm. And so I think we'll continue to see new advancements and changes and electric utilities will continue to adapt with them and to respond to our customers' needs and desires.